England. used to be confined to the feathered species, but now the human race is copying the birds. They flock and land by chartered plane and helicopter, twittering. Jackdaw, Jackdaw, do you copy? Yeah, Jackdaw. Yeah, have you got any latest update, please, Jeff? The plumage is drab, the male invariably olive green. They go about in flocks of two or three hundred, festooned with bins and scopes, tracking the two-toed lark, the red-eyed vireo, the elusive bobolink. In October, the females are left on the nest. Well, there's always the fear of missing something. Um, they will go like mad. Last week there was a, a bird on Shetland, a brown shrike, first for Britain again. They left here on the Monday and got there on the Wednesday evening in Aberdeen for the boat, got to the bird on Thursday morning, it had gone. But for their mind, it was worth the risk. You know, they can't bear to miss, they'll spend any money they can. You know, going throughout Britain, if they can't sort of get four in a car, they'll hitch a lift or some even go by train if they've got the money. Another flash from Radio Birdbrain. Benelli's warbler has been sighted. Boatloads of birders flock to St Martin's. But it's a false alarm. The warbler turns out to be a chiff chaff. The action switches to the next island, Tresco. Down in the woods, there's a bee eater. There's even talk of a possible olive bat pipit. Quite apart from the thrill of the chase, it's very good for the off-season boating business. What are we looking at? The bee, bee eater. It just flew over. Yeah. It's flying about up there saying quilp, quilp, quilp. Quilp, quilp. Yeah. It's quilp. Quilp. It's been flying. We were been looking at it. I missed it. I didn't see it. Just by a crossbow. No, before. well, you wouldn't, you see. Watch what you keep for. It's only a little. Well, without glass, it's quite a little thing. It's not a great big Does it? Does it rate a, I mean, a, is, it, is it important? Does it rate a... Oh, it rates very much. A it's mega a yes, tick. A big, <laughs> well, good God, yes. Um, it's uh, been a good year for them this yes. year. But what about the pipit that I'm looking for? Is it? Well, go and look for it. You've only got to go up there. Well, it's it's, it's, a, it's an Siberia. Asiatic pipit. Mm -hmm. It's exactly like a meadow pipit to look at, so practically. I, could I tell the difference? I mean, no, you couldn't. Oh. Yes, you could. Of well, course you could. Well, he could if someone pointed out to him, but I think if the gentleman doesn't know much about it and hasn't got a book and hasn't got binoculars, he would be a bit of a... Um, bit of a... Well, you'd be at a bit of a disadvantage. Birdwatching clearly has a pecking order. At the bottom of the pile, the dudes who can't tell a pippet from a puffin. The tickers who treat the sport like train spotting. The twitchers who have been known to fall off bicycles in sheer excitement. And the birders, the educated ornithologists who casually identify a small grey dot half a mile away. It's tough being a dude. The herring gull turns out to be common, while the common gull is rare. Neither rates a mega tick.